All right, so these are your wealth and change in Carolina guided notes. So at this point, Carolina's economic system is going to be highly focused on plantation systems, production of raw goods like rice and indigo, trade, and obviously creating naval stores like pitch and tar, and that's going to be another really big one for Carolina. Carolina is in need of a staple crop. Um, they wanted to you know, further expand the cash crops that they grew to help stabilize the economy, and so rice soon became a huge cash crop due to the intelligence of African slaves and their methods to cultivate the land. The cultivation of rice. Um, the idea of growing rice came from a visiting ship in Charlestown Harbor. The captain gave bags of rice to the governor of Carolina, and they soon realized that um, this rice grew better in wet soil along the rivers and the marshes of the low country. Um, so much so that rice became known as Carolina gold. Indigo is a second staple, a second staple crop for Carolina. Um, a really important fact about indigo is that it can be grown anywhere. It does not need unique soil to be grown, which is great for the backcountry. It provided a costly blue dye that brought a high price in Europe. Eliza L. Pickney learned how to grow um, and effectively extract the blue dye and helped establish indigo as another cash crop for Carolina. There's an image of that blue dye. So Britain is in heavy financial need. Um, during the rule of King Charles II of England, the economy was in bad shape. He was fighting many wars, which drained England's wealth extremely. Um, and so rules on trade were needed between England and the colonies. This regulation of trade is called mercantilism. It's for the benefit of the mother country. The goal for England was to sell more goods than they buy. Carolina provided the mother country with raw materials and was also a place for them to sell back their finished goods. So as you can see, the mother country is the only one that colonies can trade between and buy from um, and not each other. And this allowed England to make lots of money. Trade with Barbados um, is also adding to the colony's wealth. Barbados offered Carolina a source of African slaves while Carolina sold cattle to Barbados and pitch and tar used to make wooden ships watertight. Growth and development in Carolina. Carolina Colony saw their economy and personal wealth grow as cash crop production increased. Plantation owners soon became um, some of the richest people in the British Empire. Um, however, as the years passed, the investments of the planters were becoming extremely vulnerable due to the lack of protection by the Lord's proprietors. Soon after the colony split into two sections, the North and the South, the colonists were bombarded with attacks from the Spanish from La Florida. The Yemisee Native Americans also took part in several attacks on the English colonists. Um, and these attacks proved to be really expensive and upset the planter upper class of South Carolina. There was also interference with their shipments. The planters and merchants of South Carolina began losing money as a result of pirate attacks. And in 1719, the South Carolina Assembly sent a petition to England requesting that the proprietors be replaced with the Crown Administration. The merchants and planters did not feel the proprietors were doing a good enough job protecting the colonists. So they became a royal colony. Um, King George was able to appoint royal governors for the North and South Carolina, converting the colony status to that of a royal colony. The colonists could now request assistance from the British Army if future problems deemed necessary, um, but unfortunately that also meant that they would be subjected to higher taxes in the future. Tensions are going to start brewing between the up country um, or the back country and the low country. The English government thought the royal governor, through the royal governor, established townships in the back country to encourage migration. These people wanted to expand their resources and grow subsistence farms, which are farms um, solely for the sake of feeding their families, not cash crops to trade or sell. The first white settlers to move to the backcountry were traders and woodsmen, so they were viewed by the Lowcountry elite as uncivilized. Lowcountry versus the backcountry. Soon more people lived in the backcountry than the Lowcountry. The backcountry paid the same amount of taxes, yet they had no police forces, schools, or other governmental infrastructure. Um, and the backcountry also had limited representation in Carolina's House of Assembly during the royal period because only white landowning men were permitted to cast a vote to select members. The backcountry regulator movement. Since the colonial government was not protecting the backcountry, the regulators take the law into their own hands. 
He's calling us with chat law gangs, criminals, um, and really anyone else that was causing issues in the backcountry by provi providing law and order through what they saw fit as punishments. And sometimes these punishments were extremely cruel.